low impact, full body toning. We are gonna start with just no step, um, but our feet moving, rhythmic limbering, right? And if you, I know that I say this periodically, but um, I realize that you might want music to train to. And I will tell you that if you do, the beats per minute that we normally, more often than not, would be working at would be a tempo of about 126 beats per minute. So if you put music on in the background to make it more enjoyable for yourself, when I train on the dock, I've got my, uh, my earbuds in. So I'm, I always listen to things because music really can change your energy um, output. And if it's songs that you just fire you up, you will find that you just want to work harder. So there you go. Push. A lot of my tempoed music when I'm training um, is really slow stuff, right? And then I'll mix in um, a high tempoed song where I'll grab my jump rope and I'll jump for three minutes, right? And then for the next 15 minutes, it's like slow motion stuff. And, uh, and I move slow, super slow motion. So, you know, I realize that when I'm doing my doc work, I'm very much in my zone, but I'm right in the middle of everything. We're just going to keep changing movements. So follow along. Right? So what I mean by being right in the middle of everything is I'm in a space where anybody looking out of their window onto the water from their condominium would be able to see something going out on the dock. That would be me. But I like to have the water view and the sun and the fresh air and the wind blowing, you know, so I like to be in the elements. I've already changed into the next thing. Hinge, right? So pull it up. If your shoulder's bothering you, then don't go for the full extension, right? Push, pull, five. So I was doing my thing and I don't know if it was Saturday or Sunday because I managed to get it in both days this weekend, release, relax, heel touch. And um, I was transitioning into another move and these people were taking a tour of the property to, I don't know if they were touring the property, I had never seen them before, but they were walking and most when I'm out there, I'm generally by myself. Anyway, they approached me and one of the uh, gentlemen asked, he's like, are you a professional? <laughs> That's like tough to answer, right? Grapevine. Remember we practiced our grapevine and our forward walk across the front. Try it when you get to this side, walk across the front. It's so weird, right? Open, cross, open, touch. Open, cross, open, touch. The thing that the walk across the front does, and I just messed you up, right? Open, cross, is that it allows you to actually rotate your body. Open, walk. So if you're trying to stay facing the screen, doing the crossover, quarter turn the direction, right? And that just gives you this nice fluid thing. So we're going to go from this, which is just you moving, right? Four steps. And even if your steps are really tight, try to get a little more space between your feet. So four more of these rotated turns. One, two, three, that's two. That's three, back to your grapevine, right? Grapevine. So now double step touch. The double touch just tempers the movement a little bit. And single step touch after you come out of this one, single touches. So I kind of chuckled and I said, well, I said I am a professional because he didn't say what kind of professional, right? So I'm like, what? I, so I was like, well, I, I, I guess I was like, definitely in, uh, in a regard, I am definitely a professional because like, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, I'm all of those things. And I said, um, 
then they all chimed in. They're like, everything was like, so like smooth and complete. <laughs> and I was like, that's so good to know because that's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Here we go, pull back, <laughs> try to make contact with the heel. So it's a funny thing, right? And what I mean, it's a funny thing is music. If you're working at too fast a tempo for what you're actually trying to achieve, what will happen is you will have a series. I'm going to show you, you will have a series of like incomplete movement. So try to get your hand to touch your foot. And that takes a little bit more than you just kicking the leg back and dropping the hand. Connect. And you might say, there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to connect my hand to foot. But if you don't try to slow yourself down and figure out where the two parts of your connection is, you miss it. And that is what I consider incomplete, right? So you might lack the flexibility and strength to get the hand and the foot together, but guess what you can do? You can connect hand to knee, hand to that front tib, right? So try it again, go back. What are you connecting to, if anything, right? Drop, squat, pull it up, drop, squat, pull it up, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, because it's a tricky thing when your parts are behind you. Four, three, two, now marching feet, march, march, march. Okay, rock, step, push, push. So now we've just increased our tempo. You should feel like your heart rate's up a little bit, right? What I want you to do <laughs> is go back to your marching feet and we're gonna switch over to the other leg, rock, step, right? When you're ready. Does it matter if you're stepping forward into me now, or are you mirroring me so that you're stepping back, right? So I took my mom's silver sneaker class last week back to marching feet. And I want you to give me an alternating pattern. And it looks like this. You march in the middle for three, rock step, march in the middle for three, one, two, three, rock, step, march, two, three, rock, step, march, two, three, rock, step. So I have a client that with my absences that are getting ready to uh, come your way, I wanted to make sure that at least once a week she could get in to something and it's a group fitness class, but I knew that based on what I know about her body, that the class would actually be um, not easy for her, but a good activity that would meet a high level of criteria of patterned movements, brain stimulation, some band training, ball training, light dumbbell training. Are you doing it? right? It looks like so much more when we actually add in lateral line work, right? Come back to the front. It's the same thing as this same number of steps, right? But why when we cross and travel, does it seem like just an entirely different move. This is that pattern footwork where your legs are on autopilot and you're just traveling, right? Travel, travel. Are you getting it? You're maybe you're like, gosh, I keep messing up right there. <laughs> Back to center. So anyway, in the silver sneakers class, the music was good fun. And, uh, Obviously, I was the youngest one in class, but it didn't matter. And I haven't been in one of my mom's workouts in, I don't know, 25 years, maybe longer, <laughs> 30. Uh, and so it was good to be in there. But I realized that I'm pretty animated, right? And I wasn't trying to be disruptive, 
but the music was like making me like, you know, like everything was a little bit more expressive and I wasn't trying to be like, I was just feeling, feeling the movement. And I, at the end of class, I like had to apologize to my mom. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sorry if by my antics were um, disruptive. And she's like, oh no. She's like, it was so much fun to have your energy. Are you getting a burn? TikToks, TikToks. So now imagine that you've walked into a frame and you've got front body bracing and back body bracing. And so now your TikTok has to be straight out to the sides, not the leg kicking back because that's a whole different movement. And what I find with most people's leg swing, it's hip abduction, is that when they load the leg, the moving leg actually tracks forward. Try to get it to sweep straight out to the side, which might require you, right, to soften your knee a little bit, slow yourself down a little bit, look down, watch where your leg is going. That's pretty important five, push, four, push, burn it out, three, we're going to work the inners, two, two, and cut, <sighs> walk it out. So Marlene, you may recall at the Sheridan, I used to put us along the wall and there was that red stripe on the floor. I think it was red. Okay. So now here's something that maybe a wall, maybe your chair, maybe your stick. I'm gonna use my chair, okay, as the imaginary wall, all right? And now I want you to imagine that from your hand support about two feet away from your imaginary wall, you have a line on the floor. And here's the thing, we are going to step on the line right? With the inside leg. I'm like, does it, why am I so specific? Because it's something very specific I'm getting ready to ask you to do. All right. So you got hand support, you got your uh, inside leg to the chair. The leg closest to the chair is the one that's on your imaginary line. And now the other leg is out. So stay with me here. We just did a series of external leg lifts for hip abduction. Now you're going to take this working leg and you're going to internally, well, you're externally rotating it, but it's your heel. Your heel is going to sweep across the imaginary line towards your chair. All right. So sweep, it comes back out to the lateral position and you draw the foot. The foot, it can be pointed or flexed, but you need to externally rotate it because you want to lead with the inside of the arch and the ankle bone. Personally, I like to keep my leg lengthened and pointed toe to control the external rotation. So here we go. The leg it can take a nice wide sweep out to toe point and then a sweep across. This is not a move that we normally do together, right? Sometimes we do it laying down on the floor, but this is a great balance move. If you don't need your chair, swish. What you want to do is as you look down, your end range for your sweeping leg needs to make it across the line, right? Because you're actually using the stance leg as kind of like a brace for resistance. And if the leg doesn't come across far enough, you're not getting enough movement. 10, nine, eight, arms or no arms, seven, six, whew, five. The stabilizer on the stance leg should be hard at work. Three, two, now relax. Light little jog. Just don't forget which side you were working because we're going to go back and work the other. <sighs> but I had a lot of fun because the music was fun. And we were doing, you know, we were doing all scaled back versions of all the things that I give you. It was just, it was like the, the silver sneakers, right? Like we, we weren't like in jog mode. Everything was like low level foot patterned work. And um, 
Marlene, it's something that I know that you could do too, and you would probably very much like it. Anyway, the class is on Thursday at 11 o'clock at Gold's Gym off Missouri. And um, it's only, it's a $10 drop-in fee. Your insurance may even cover it, right? Shake it out. Ready? Leg number two. Go to your chair. The leg that's closest to the chair is the stance leg. The other leg is the sweep across leg. So positions, please. Taking the leg, tap. Now, if we were really working at a wall, I would try to get you to connect with the wall, right? So think about that, right? The chair, you can't really connect with the leg of the chair because it's too far away. But think about, you want that working sweeping leg to come across the stance foot and it should already be working. If you're not feeling much of anything, then this flow of letting the leg have this big long movement is actually an easier version to this. Keep it across and now do quicker kicks. Point the toe, belly to spine, push, push. And you see how my leg is working at an angle? I'm not trying to bring it here with a straight across kick because then look what it just did to my line. Pull your hips forward, stand tall. Let the leg have a forward track and 10, nine, eight. It should be on fire high, high up into the inside of that thigh and four and three and two and release. Ah, move your chair out of your space if space is an issue. Think hula, think twisty board, think jogging in place, think marching feet, maybe bouncing the ball, right? You've got a lot of options. You don't have to add any accessories, right? And if you already feel like your body is working too hard, then sit down. Oh, so new hula. <laughs> I mean, it's not a new hula. It's a new hula for me. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I've got a um, my early morning client, you know. Anyway, I bring her all kinds of things. I'm bringing her the jump rope. And I want to say she's 62. So uh, we've been practicing the hula because she's got nieces and nephews and she's like, I just want them to see me like do these fun things and be able to do fun things with them. And I was like, of course you can. So she's been practicing and here's, here's how she first started with her legs as far apart, like and like she looked really stressed like this relax and I said to her walk around your space I'm like you know your version of the hula hoop is so much harder than my version <laughs> so as she was trying to learn it right and now you're going to go back do something else again for a few more seconds I'm going to switch sides so the last time I had her doing who I let her get into her thing, right? And I'm just demonstrating. So I let her get into her thing. And then I say, okay, I want you to bring it up a little bit. And I want you to start closing the gap between your feet a little bit. Okay. And now I'm like, okay, because now she's doing it. And then I say, okay, relax your neck and shoulders diffuse some of the stress in your face. I was like, keep bringing your feet a little bit closer together. I was like, I know it's gonna feel weird. I said, but I want you to tighten up your position. And I said, I want your middle body to do the work. <laughs> so, and she did it, release and relax. And the thing is, she kept expecting the hula to flub up and just fall to the floor. She kept waiting to flub up but she didn't. And she finally reached a point of fatigue where she had to stop. And that's the great thing about when you, when you finally identify, put your little gadget away and grab your light weights. When you're actually finally able to identify that you're not having to stop something because your skill is lacking, but because you're nailing it and now you're fatigued, that was a massive like, 
improvement. And though she still has like, cause she, we're in a room that's got full of mirrors. She doesn't want to look at herself while she's doing it because to her own eye, the look of what she sees back in the mirror isn't pleasing to her. She's like, oh, I just look like a whatever. And uh, anyway, but I'm always super enthusiastic because the next part of the equation that has nothing to do with the skill of what I'm teaching her, but it has to do with what I'll call the decompression state, okay? So think about this. You have probably over the years found yourself in a very like overwhelmed state of so many things to do, right? She runs a business, you know, there's this just, she runs circles around everybody that I know. And I think to myself, man, I would not want her schedule. <laughs> I wouldn't want, I just wouldn't want it. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't want to do it. And so when she comes into training, I have to give her things that keep her present because her list of things to do for the day is so long and overwhelming that if I don't put in some of this like hula hoop and jump rope where she's got to focus, then her mind is already at the office, right? Looking at her list, your arms getting a little heavy. Now you're ready for phase two, relax, go into your hip hinge, right? Pull, nice long sweeping arm. We are going to exaggerate squat. Now, the stop point should be with your weights right in front. And yet your body still has to maintain that, that diagonal line from the back of the head to the tailbone. If you draw down like this and you're all humped over, you're in the wrong position. You are in athletic ready position. We just happen to be braced in athletic ready and we're going to squat and pull. And now when we pull, we're gonna pull all the way up to your lateral raise, okay? And you're going to squat and bring the hands to stop parallel to each other. I'm drawing this out because it's important. Control the up to lateral raise, lengthen the squat, hips lower without rounding the spine. Ready? Here we go, 10 of them. Pull, one, exhale up, two. When you stand up, squeeze your buns, three. Inhale down, four, pull, five. These two movements go hand in hand together, six. If you can teach yourself to not drop your weights to your shins, right? eight, squeeze the buns, nine, squat down, set yourself up for tricep. Here's the tricky part. You are going to do this alternating extending arm with an opposite leg tap back, touch, tap, touch, tap, touch, tap. You're maintaining your athletic ready position, all right? So you may or may not be looking down, which is fine. The leg that taps back is going to full extension without weight bearing, okay? Tap, which puts you in front leg assisted static squat. Now, faster arms, push, 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 push. 10, shoulders are retracted. If your head is hanging, your neck is part of your spine. So pull the back of your neck into neutral with the rest of your spine. Nine, eight, seven, six, shoulder blades are depressed. Four, three, two, relax. Okay, grab a little drink. Hmm. <laughs> Is strong. I still haven't completely used the bottle of that vinegar with the cayenne pepper. I wonder if you guys truly know some of the benefits of cayenne pepper. 
It's crazy. Anyway, I, over the years, have used not cayenne as a spice, like in seasoning foods, um, even though that would work, but cayenne in tinctures. So because we're into our next set of aerobic work, I told you I've been messing with some stuff with the jump rope. You decide hula hoop, bouncing ball, prancing feet, right? Core twisty board. Maybe you've got a jump rope and you're like, huh, I'll try it, but you got to have a lot of space. So what am I doing? This is an interesting thing that even if you were not a jumper, right? They make these jump ropes that have the handles with about four, maybe five inches of what looks like jump rope attached to it, which is kind of interesting. But for my purposes, I'm going side to side because I'm trying to learn a new skill, right? So now I'm going, right? And I'm actually going to jump because I want to learn how to jump into my rope and then get myself going. Now I know that seems silly, but when I'm out on the dock, I can be doing my rock step touches and I get into like really jumping for like three minutes, all different pattern work. If you don't have a rope, you don't have to have a rope, but there is a coordinated aspect of being able to jump at the right time, which you just saw me flub up, right? Cause I went into brain mode and talking. So here we go again. Stay with whatever you're doing. So with this rope, what I mean is when I'm out on the dock, this is what I'm doing. I'm like working my rope because it's all movement and I can whip this rope freely with tension and I can get my legs going and then it's coordination, right? So we're gonna do whatever we're doing for another 20 or 30. And if I mess up, I'll just start again, but all different kinds of patterns, stay with it. Cause we got about 10 more, right? I said, we're gonna do 20 or 30, but the, car the carpet, it's my feet. The carpet and my feet are triggering this rope problem. There it went again, five, four, three, two, and cut. You need to feel that heart rate come up. Right. Okay. Grabbing your heavier set of weights, biceps and shoulders. And it might be time for the fan. I should have thought of that earlier. So think hammer time. I love the hammer curl. I love the hammer curl combination of hammer and shoulder press. And I'm gonna give an option here. So we're gonna do our first set standing. And then I'm gonna give you an option. So eight reps, don't let me do more. <laughs> Two, here we go. Exhale up, three. If you can only do the bicep curl portion of it, just slow yourself down. Here's number five, reach, inhale down, exhale, push, six, slow and steady, push, seven. Now, that's first set. Okay, so now set those down. You're gonna grab your chair and I wanna give you an option. I realize that kneeling for everybody is not, you know, equally embraced, but I, I'm turning my chair this way for a reason, okay? If you're gonna sit down, put your chair the right way because you're going to sit and do your second set of biceps and shoulders seated. But if you're going to kneel with me, a lot of times I'll have people kneeling on a bench, right? Even kneeling on the floor is a different beast 
for biceps. But kneeling on a bench or a chair where your foot right, is free requires a little more work from your body. So if you're seated in your chair, you're seated on the front edge of your chair. If you're kneeling with me, pull your hips through, give your body your really straight line, navel to spine, buns tight, hammer curl, shoulder press. Inhale, exhale. Our body, I was going to say thrives, right? But the, the newness of feeling something different, the stimulus of feeling a different activation, right? With the same move of bicep shoulders, now that you've changed your position, it's a different activation. So I love the kneeling aspect of a lot of movements, four more, and that'll give us at least 12, right? Exhale on the up push, squeezing buns. So often, why I like to put people in the kneeling position, I'm gonna show you something, is because they don't even realize that their butt is pushing back. But in kneeling position, you've got to do exactly what you're supposed to be doing standing, but kneeling is less forgiving. You'll know quicker from a kneeling position if you're doing it wrong. Make this next one your last one. And now, easy on the dismount. If you're seated, stay seated, right? You can set your weights off to the side. We're going to do our sit to stand. It's like my new favorite. So I've always loved squats, but the sit to stand squat has your feet in that staggered. Let me grab my phone. Has the feet in a staggered position. I'm grabbing my phone to set the timer for 30 seconds. All right. So one moment, please. You should feel like your body's like, it shouldn't just be me that has a slightly elevated heart rate. By design, your feet are in an offset staggered position, right? The trailing leg, heel is in full push down to the floor. Both feet are pushing down. But sometimes what will happen is your back foot will tend to be heel up, ground both feet. Okay, ready? Timer set for 30 seconds. Cross your arms over your shoulders. Go. Just wanted to make sure it started. Two, here we go. Three. If you can move faster, do. Count your reps. I think that's six if you're on Kimpa with me. Seven, eight, nine, <laughs> 10, 11, 12. Get there. 13, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19. Oh, we're doing really good. 20, 21, 22. Time. How many did you get? Last week, we didn't get as many. This is one of these fantastic things. Now we're going to take a breather. We may do another set before it's all said and done. I want to make sure that doesn't start again. Yeah. Um, but that's our new record. 22, 21, 22. Okay. Think hip hinge. You're like, we love hip hinge. Hip hinge. Arms draped over the front. If you're too far back, your knees will drag on the floor. So we've got to shimmy forward just enough so you feel like you can get your legs up, okay? You see where my knee is in relation to my hip? We're trying to get the knee to raise so that it's parallel to the floor, but that requires a lot of work, okay? So here we go. Settle yourself in. Your arms are bracing against the chair. Lower the knees, inhaling. Your neck and shoulders, right? Shoulders are out of the ears. The neck is long without you holding your head up. I want you to feel the side edges of your feet touch. Okay, inhale with bent legs. Squeeze the buns, drive the legs up, pinch. 
Inhale down, exhale, lift. Now, the knees are a little bit apart from each other on the up. They come closer together on the down, and then you let the knees have a little bit of a flare on the up. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up, squeeze, right? So what the chair does is it helps stabilize our trunk so that our back is neutral, all right? And you're using the heavy resistance of your legs as that mover, right? Or I should say the resistance is the heaviness of the legs. Inhale down, exhale up. You're just going to do one set of this. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Even if your movement is really slow, it's actually harder to do slower, <laughs> squeezing. And now stretch the legs out. You should feel a great amount of fatigue down there. Ease yourself to stand. All right. Take your time, move your chair out of the way. Okay. You may need to move your dumbbells again. We're going to do one more round of our pattern footwork, and it's going to include rock steps, marching feet, walk across the fronts, great vines, double step touches, all of the patterns that we've already done with our legs, we're going to incorporate them into like a giant set, which, you know, another two to three minutes of elevated heart rate. We had such a beautiful sunrise here this morning. I uh, ran upstairs to get my drone. <laughs> you know, that's, I'm telling you this because sometimes it's so hard to live in the present with all of these gadgets that we have. So I look outside, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's pretty. I wanna capture this. So by the time I ran upstairs to get my drone, unfolded my drone, hooked it up to my phone. I like missed the best, I missed the best part of the colors, marching feet. So then I get the drone set up. I get my phone hooked up to the app and the drone, it's all synced. And then I'm looking at the screen and it says to me, low battery. <laughs> and for a moment, I contemplated, you know, I wonder how much battery it takes to actually like lift it off and fly it for a couple of seconds, but it would be my luck that it would die and, you know, fall to the water. So I brought it back in, but I did manage to catch a little video. Um, and then a little birdie came and the bird, I, I was hoping to, we're just letting ourselves recover a little bit. Okay. So I could tell that the bird was getting ready to fish and the water is so clear that I could see the this little school of itty bitty fishes and the bird was small. So I knew that that's what it was fishing for. So I was sitting there with the video, like getting ready to hit play on the video, zoomed in waiting for this bird, patiently waiting for the bird to go and try to eat. And after like five minutes, like he didn't. And so I walked away. So I was like, I must be screwing up this bird's feeding because I'm like hovered here. So rock step. Give me two more. Now, marching feet, rock step for four. I count on the back one, figure out where your count is, two. You're doing four, three. You're going to march in the middle and rock step. March in the middle, rock step, rock step, march two, three, rock step. Are you with the tempo now? Because from the tempo, we're gonna be doing our crossover rock, right? Crossover rock. March two, three, cross over, rock step, right? And I can't even get the words out fast enough, right? So you're traveling forward and back with your transition in some version of this. So I don't wanna screw you up, but 
there is a playful, quick little foot pattern, right? That can be done. It's like a little shuffle. And did I throw you off or are we still on the same number of beats? So instead of doing a three count march, it's like quick foot rock, quick foot rock, <laughs> quick one more. And if you're still on the three step march, marching feet right here, march, march, march. Okay, step touches. Double step touch, double step touch. Stay with double step touch. The next easiest thing to go into from your double step touch is grapevine, grapevine, right? If we had this big open space, no boundaries, lots of foot work space, we would continue with a grapevine step that just goes on and on. And that is a combination of grapevine and the walkover step, but it's put together, you can keep traveling one direction, right? So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go to our walkover step, walk across the front with rotation, walk across the front. You're not really walking across the front, you're swiveling, right? Half swivel, and you just start a four count walk, two, three, and four, one, two. With your four count walking step, we can actually direct ourselves forward. So when you come out of the side step, come forward. One, two, three, and four, back it up. Stay forward with me. When you come back, we're gonna put grapevines into it so that we can get into a right forward step. Now you're like, oh, but Michelle, that's my left foot. <laughs> Sorry, push pull. Here we go. You're doing four little steps, four steps back again. And then you're gonna put three step touches one more time forward. When you get back, three step touches, here you go. Here's one touch, two touch, walk, right? Pull it back, step touch for three, right? One, two, walk. You're like, but that same leg repeat. I'm probably miscounting. <laughs> There's your three. <laughs> Where do you take the first count? Forward. Did I, throw, did I throw you off? Step touch. Finish with your step touches. Think. Relax. You're finished with your step touches. Grab a drink. Grab your ball. Grab your mat. Depending on how strong, how coordinated you feel, we can do a chest press, dumbbell chest press, laying on our ball in bridge holding position, dumbbell chest press. So if something about that scares you, then you're gonna lay on the floor. But if you think you can sit on your ball with your weight, walk out to bridge, get into full bridge and do dumbbell chest press, that's where I want you. Mm. All right. I am gonna put my mat down because of the sliding component of foot position. And I'm gonna just stick with my eight pounders, all right? Using the ball, I'd like to try to incorporate a little bit of our ball training almost in every single workout because it's got such a great little variety of feeling to the body. So you're ready? You might already be in bridge hold your weights up to your body go to c curve spine easy does it on your walkout right and if for some reason you've gone to the floor you're not going to hold a bridge if you're on the floor your back is flat your hips are down but the legs are bent okay so on the ball you want to walk out far enough so that when you put your head down on the ball and you lift your hips because you're in pelvic tilt, it's called tabletop. So your feet should be right under the knees, not pulled back tighter. There should be no pressure across the kneecap. And you wanna have enough upper back support so you don't feel like your chin is burrowing into your chest. There, there is a correct spot for your body. Hold the arms up, lift the hips, give me your pelvic tilt, your neck is neutral. Lower your shoulder blades first, and then bend the arms. Push up, shoulder blade slides, bend the arms. The beauty of being on the floor is that, right, when your triceps and elbows connect with the floor, 
you'll know that's where your stop zone is. It's already built in for you. But on the ball, you can go a little bit deeper. And it's in that little bit deeper that you have to determine if that's too much for your shoulder. All right, as the arms bend, if the hands move towards one another and now they're over your chest, instead of being lined up over the elbow, you're not maintaining your good form. So as your arm bends, the wrist and the elbow pretty much line up. The hand should not be pulling in over the shoulder joint. Two different positions. One is right, one is wrong. Push. Now, give me a little speed. Five. Squeeze the buns. Four. Three. Two. Hold the arms up. Turn the hands into each other. If your dumbbells are like mine, they're hexagonal. So I can put the flat sides of the dumbbells to touch. And now I'm doing strict form tricep pushes. All right, also known as a skull crusher. So elbows are running parallel to each other. The weight comes right down to the top of my forehead. Exhale on the up push, push, inhale down. Buns are tight, exhale, push. You got four more, inhale and exhale. I try to use weight that's universal. So even though my chest muscle is larger than my tricep, right? I'm using the same amount of weight release the arms, pick up your head as before you walk yourself all the way up, just set the weight down, make it easier for yourself. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Now your ball is going to be used for you to do stiff legged bridging. So get your towel, lay yourself down on the floor. Your ball is going to be at the end of you because your legs are going to be on the ball. You do not need a cushion for your head, all right? Because when we bridge, the act of lifting your hips should stabilize your shoulder position on the floor so that if your head were propped up, right? and then you go to bridge, it may be too much cervical position for you. So I just like to put my towel down to have it because now that we're here, all right, where should your legs be on the ball to do bridges? Sometimes when I'm with people, you know, I don't expect everybody to have the knowingness about where's the right position on the ball. That's why I'm so specific. But I've already given you a, a, a handful of pointers information. I said stiff legged. So at stiff legged position, if your heels aren't touching the ball, the ball is too close to you, walk it out. It should really be about mid calf to heel. And now before you ever think that you're ready to lift your hips, you might pick up your head and look at what your legs are doing. Are the legs flopped out to the side? No, they're straight and they're flexed. And now you're gonna activate quads and glutes and keep feet hard flexed. All right, bring your head back down to the floor. The arms are extended with the shoulders pulled back. Try to feel the side edges of your feet stay connected and now belly to spine pelvic tilt and lift the hips from the floor. As you lifted your hips from the floor, did the feet fall apart from each other? Wow, right? Most people, the answer would be yes. They're like, why did that happen? Put the side edges of your feet together because it's harder to do it this way, right? This is correct alignment. Belly to spine, buns tight pelvic tilt, arms are long, the backs of the hands are touching the floor, and hopefully you're not bearing down into the arms, they're just there. You're in fixed, firm position. Now, lower your hips, not to completely rest, but just to bring the body down to the floor, but you're still in pelvic tilt. Set yourself back up. And here's a big decision you have to decide for yourself. Are you nailing it? Does this feel really easy? 
right? Are you looking down the front of your body, staring at your feet, wondering why the feet are turning one way or the other? Try to square your parts up without falling off the ball. Belly to spine, lower the hips, raise the hips, pelvic tilt, lower the hips. All right, so if you're thinking that this is going along and it's just too simple, you get to try something. You get to elevate the hands. And as you're lifting the hips, you're raising the arms up to the ceiling. And you might get to the point where you can take and track the arms all the way back overhead, turning the palms towards one another and letting the thumbs touch the floor over your head. And now as the arms track back to their start position, you're gonna coordinate the lowering phase of the hips. It all comes down smoothly. And to feel the body have a little bit of squirrely action to it, and yet you not fall off the ball, really good. Okay, so here we go, try it again. Belly to spine, you're in pelvic tilt, stiff legs, ankles and big edges or side edges of the big toes touching. Start peeling the hips from the floor, elevating the arms, take your full stretch. And at the point where you feel like you might be losing control, stop and regain control before you keep going and totally slide off the ball. I'm giving you the arm aspect of this, right? And as I'm talking, I'm throwing myself out of position. But as you incorporate your arms, it makes your contact point with the floor so minimal that that's what creates the extra challenge. It's focus, it's navel to spine, it's stiff body. And even if you can't do it, that's okay. You're doing your basic bridge, right? It is such a strange thing to lose control, but it requires so much focus and bring yourself back into the lowering phase. Do whatever you need to do with your arms, right? Ease yourself down. Now pull the ball to you. I want you to take your legs, wrap the legs over the top of that ball, like get a grip on it, okay? So, if you'll take your feet in calves and push down into the ball like you're trying to squeeze it, you should be able to get the ball to leave the floor unless your ball is too big. Or, and or, if you've got really slick, silky uh, tights on, then you might not be able to get the ball off the floor. But if you can, your legs are pulling to you, exhale up, Inhale down. If this is one of those moves where you can't get the ball off the floor, right? Then I want you to forget about the ball and just do bicycle pedals. But this is a very isolating movement here and it's called a reverse crunch. So instead of the upper body doing a crunch, it's called reverse because you're using your legs to do your crunch. You can put your hands behind the head if that helps you have a better neck position. Exhale, lift, inhale down, exhale, lift. When you exhale, you really do want to draw your navel down to your spine. Five more. Four, three, two. Takes a lot of control of the leg muscles. Relax, walk the ball out. Okay, set one foot across the thigh of the other leg. Ah, and now you're, this is a, a nice gentle hip stretch, right? So you're gonna push the ball out, tuck the ball in. I'm not even gonna get really specific on the tracking, right? So as long as you're drawing the ball in, you should feel like you're getting a nice gentle stretch in the rump, right? If it doesn't feel right, then stop. Forget about using the ball. Get the one leg crossed over the other and let your other foot just rest on the floor. We're only gonna be here for a few more seconds. Now, switch legs. 
All right. Pull, push. And maybe as you start pulling the ball to you, you feel like you want to go further, except you can't get any further without using your hands. Take your hand, grab the back of that leg that's on the ball and guide it in a little bit tighter. Your body's natural resistance, right? The natural stop point. That might be as far as some of you need to go, but there may be a gentle assist that gets you deeper without strain. So that's your real challenge is how do you find the stretch, not strain, right? And you work to your greatest range of motion. Do one more. Pulling, shoulders are pulling back to the floor. The neck is long. And now walk that ball back in. So this is going to be another relaxing hip stretch, right? And you're rocking from side to side. As you rock from side to side, you get to decide just how far you're going. And I realize that's kind of like stating the obvious, right? And I'm only putting parameters on it to say this. You could go all the way over. And for some, that might not feel like there's any stress. But for me, there is a point where it's it, it's stressful, not in a strained way, but more like it stops feeling like that nice, smooth stretch. And it feels like in order to get the ball back to the other side, it requires a lot of work. And the work is not your imagination. That is the work that the oblique muscles have to be engaged and prepared to do. So if you want more, because you're not ready to be done and relaxed, then you keep rolling your legs over. But just know that you should also be pulling your navel into your spine because you're not taking this as a stretch. You're doing it for ab work. For the rest of us, we're just in a few inches of side to side rock because we're letting the back and the hips decompress. And now relax. You are done with the ball. Roll to the side, help yourself up, push yourself up. Before you pop up off the floor, just get your wits about you, right? Lift and breathe, release. And now try to go not to hands and knees, but rather hands and toes. So instead of becoming weight bearing on the knees, right, you're going to get your legs, think knees not touching the floor, think strong arms and strong toes, right? So support yourself, swivel the knees out from under you, separate the feet, walkie, 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 hands back, feet to floor, roll it up, lift and breathe, release and relax. All right. Job well done. Hope you guys have a great day and I hope I will see you manana.